Hey everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here, physical therapist with a knee replacement therapist. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, I'm going to share with you five top tips for nutrition when it comes to your recovery and rehab after knee replacement surgery. So we're going to get into the top five tips real quick. If you're someone who's interested in catching all things related to knee replacement surgery, exercises, frequently asked questions, recovery, rehab, the surgery itself, be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you can catch all our videos. I post a new video every other day. So let's jump into this list. So number one, the number one nutritional tip is get plenty of protein. And why is protein important? Well, protein is needed for synthesis of muscles. And after knee replacement surgery, you're gonna have some atrophy and decrease strength in a lot of the muscles in your legs, especially the quadricep muscles, your hamstrings, your calf muscles, and some of the muscles of your hip. This may be due to pain, swelling, and just the healing process after surgery. So we wanna get plenty of protein, but we wanna try our best to get them from good sources. So for animal-based proteins, you wanna look at things such as fish, which is a great, um, has omega, omega-3 fatty acids, which are great for inflammation. You want to take a look at skinless white meat or poultry, so turkey, chicken. Um, these are great options because they have a less saturated fat compared to red meat. If you're looking at um, animal-based products, so things like yogurt, cottage cheese, eggs or egg whites have lots of protein within them. And you can also get a lot of valuable protein through plant-based options. So if you do go the plant-based route, make sure you have a good diversity of different foods so you're getting all the essential amino acids that you need to. So great sources of protein are legumes, so things like beans, chickpeas, lentils, uh, tofu is a good option, a good alternative to dairy products that people like to use. And also nuts and seeds are great sources of protein as well. The second tip is try your best to eat more foods that are anti-inflammatory that help decrease inflammation and decrease how much you consume of foods that are pro-inflammation or are going to increase your inflammation. So what are some foods that are great for decreasing inflammation or are anti-inflammatory? Well, some of the best spices are turmeric, which is in cumin. You can um, also try ginger and garlic are great options as well and in incorporating those into your food and meals. For beverages, you can look at green tea and black tea are both two great options. You also wanna get foods that are really high in fiber. Fiber-based foods are great anti-inflammatories. So again, looking at legumes, so beans, chickpeas, split peas and lentils are all really great options for anti-inflammatory type foods. And also flavo flavones or flavones, I'm not sure how to pronounce that correctly, but they're found in plant-based foods as well and is a great anti-inflammatory. And these are found in common foods that are in our diet probably, such as bell peppers, celery, apples, and oranges as well. So those are a lot of great anti-inflammatory options that are gonna help decrease inflammation. You also wanna to try to limit or stay away from foods that are gonna be pro-inflammation or gonna increase inflammation. So some of these are any foods that are high in saturated fats or trans fats. So um, things like cheese or dairy products, a lot of desserts and sweets and candies are really high in these um, pro-inflammation aspects. And also a lot of protein, unfortunately. So chicken, pork, hamburgers, all of these are gonna have a lot of saturated fat, trans fat, and are gonna increase inflammation in the body. Uh, tip number three is try your best to incorporate a wide variety and plenty of whole plant-based foods. And the reasons for that are just like I described below. With plant-based foods, both vegetables, fruits, as well as legumes, beans, and seeds, nuts, all these things are where you're gonna get a lot of your fiber, you're gonna get foods that are low in saturated and trans fats, you're gonna get foods that are anti-inflammatory, 
and you're going to get foods that are just very rich in nutrients and not as high in calories. They're not calorie dense, but they're nutrient dense in most cases. So really great to try your best to incorporate and focus your diet around whole plant-based foods is the best way to go. Of course, you still want to incorporate that protein and get plenty of protein. So trying to find um, good sources of protein as well. Number four, you want to try your best to limit the amount of foods that are high in sugars and you also want to limit the amount of processed foods that you have. Why? Because these foods are high in sugar, of course. Um, they're going to increase inflammation. They're going to be calorie dense, so a lot of calories in these foods. And just overall, there's not as much nutrients within these foods. So you really want to try to limit those foods as much as possible. And then the last tip is hydration. So just like the foods you eat, it's also important to get plenty of fluids throughout your rehab and recovery. Um, without those fluids, your body is just not going to work as well and you're not going to heal and recover as efficiently. So getting plenty of fluids, um, it's okay to have some juices or sports drinks um, to get some of those electrolytes, some sodium, potassium. Um, just try not to drink the heavy um, sports drinks all day long. You know, there's some lighter options that don't have as much sodium and sugar in them. Um, so try to focus on those options as well. But trying to stay hydrated and drinking plenty of water and other fluids throughout the day is really important and really beneficial. So I hope you found some helpful tips and helpful information from this. Be sure to leave your comments and questions below and I'll get back to you. Um, again, please be sure to turn on those subscriptions and notifications if you're interested in videos like this that talk about everything related to knee replacement surgery, preparation, recovery, the surgery itself, exercises, and everything else in between. Thank you very much for watching.